welcome to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own crocheted ribbing using the double crochet stitch or the US term single crochet stitch. By the end of this video you will be able to make your very own ribbing and I'll be giving you some tips on how much you would need to make based on some standard head sizes and hand sizes as well. This is actually on the top of an Elizabeth stitch um, mitten or fingerless glove depending on what you want to call it. Um, but you'll be able to go on to make both these fingerless gloves and lots of other projects like hats and things that really look quite nice with that ribbing on there too. The good thing with this ribbing is it's stretchy but it actually holds its shape. So before we get started don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of my crochet tutorials or my free crochet patterns um, ever again. The materials that you're going to be needing for this um, project today is going to be some yarn and the matching hook size. So I'm going to be using this chunky yarn from Paintbox, again one of my favourite colours. This is the Champagne White, uh, which is shade 302. And it does need a 6mm crochet hook because it is a chunky yarn. Um, you're also going to need a pair of scissors and a dyeing needle, just so we can finish off that project as well. So, let's get to it. Let's make our double crochet ribbing. So to get started, we're going to first of all make our slip knot and pop that onto our hook. With, um, we're going to be making a two inch cuff for a wrist warmer effectively. So with my chunky yarn, I'll need to chain nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we're going to uh, double crochet, or in US terms, single crochet all the way back down this chain. So to do that, we simply insert our hook under that first loop of the chain. So we can't work into this very, very first one, and this one doesn't count. So we're going to pop our hook into that first chain, we're going to yarn over to bring that loop up, yarn over and pull through. Ignoring that hole, we're going to work into that next chain there, again just going under that top loop. Yarn over to bring that first loop up, yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. I'm just going to continue to double crochet or single crochet in US terms all the way down to we reach the beginning of this row. And you should have at the end of this a stitch count of eight double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Because remembering that this one does not count on our hook. So to turn our work, the turning chain is going to be one. So we simply chain one and then turn our work. And we're going to be working into the back loop of our stitches. So on this first stitch here, you've got the front loop with my right hand, on my left hand, and then this one. So effectively, you've got your back loop away from you and your front loop is closest to you. So to create the ribbing, we work into the back loop only. So we simply, ignoring our chain, we simply insert our hook. I kind of go through the middle of a stitch. So I literally aim for the middle of my stitch, pop my hook through, and then I lift up my hook to pick up just the back loop of the stitch. Normally we go under the stitch and pick up both loops, but we're working into the back loop only. You'll see it written down as a BLO for back loop only. And we simply do our normal double crochet, just working into that back loop of the stitch. So we pop your hook in the middle and aim for that back loop, yarn over, bring that loop up, yarn over and pull through both loops. By aiming for the middle of the stitch, you kind of separate both those loops and it's quite easy to pick that up. And again, we just place a stitch, a double crochet or a single crochet, into each of those back loops of those stitches. So by the end of this row, you'll still have your stitch count of eight. Quick count, it's always worth it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Wonderful. We're going to chain one to turn and then once again we're going to keep working into these back loops. So ignoring our chain we're looking for that back loop. So just aim for the middle of the stitch, 
yarn over, bring that loop up, yarn over, pull through. If you are finding it a challenge to recognise your first and your last stitches as you're doing this, because I must admit I've done it myself and all of a sudden my project is getting quicker, but unfortunately I might have dropped the odd stitch every now and again. I'll show you my little cheats way, I should say pro way, of um, not missing a stitch ever again. So, in this case, you do your chain one and turn, then insert your hook to do that first stitch. Once you've completed that stitch, grab a stitch marker. So this is a rather large stitch marker, so you certainly won't miss this one. Oops. And you'll simply just pop it through that stitch. So that when you come back to the other side, you'll know exactly where that last or that first stitch is that you need to work on. And you can do that on both sides so you never miss a stitch again. But after you've done about three or four rows, you'll really start to see your ribbing become a bit more apparent as well. There's that last one for me. So there you go. Already you can see you've got your ribs. So one's poking out, one's going in, one's poking out. The other issue that people tend to have is counting their rows. So for me, I, with my tail end towards my working hand, I can then count in pairs. So each dip here in between is going to be a pair. So I've already done four rows. If I turned it over and had my tail yarn on my other on my non um, hook hand, it doesn't quite work. <laughs> but it looks like you've only got three rows, but actually you've got four. So just make sure you know where your tail end is when you start to count, and it's two and four. So for each dip, you're going to have a stitch there. So again, just remember it's chain one to turn. Work that first stitch. Pop your stitch marker in if you want to into your first stitch that you've made and then continue to work in your back loops only on every single row placing a double crochet into each stitch as well. So I'm going to show you how much easier this stitch marker makes it when you can see that last stitch because it is easy for them to disappear. So there you are. I just take that stitch marker out and then there is my last stitch there. And that's how you create your double crochet ribbing. If you wanted to make, um, using your chunky um, chunky yarn and you wanted to do a wrist warming, the average size of a wrist is about seven inches for a lady um, or for a woman, um, and it'd be eight inches for a gentleman. So you'd be looking for a lady's wrist. You'd probably need to do, with this chunky yarn, I do 22 rows of ribbing. So remembering where our tail yarn is, I can just do two, four, all the way up to 22, and then you can just slip stitch them together, um, or you can just sew them together so they're nice and neat and they join. And then that will literally just give you your wrist section, and you can add on whatever beautiful stitch you want to add on. If you'd like to learn how to make this lovely Elizabeth stitch, I'll pop a tutorial um, or the link to the tutorial below as well, so that you can go and check that one out as well. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial to learn how to do double crochet ribbing um, and I will see you again very soon in one of my other videos and one of my other crochet tutorials. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any more of these tutorials or free patterns and I will see you again very soon.